Well, there you have it. The reveal trailer for F1 23 is out. Apologies about the lateness of the video. I was too busy in work. And the trailer literally came out in the middle of my shift. So I couldn't do an instant reaction. But here I am. And I've seen the trailer for F1 23. And surprisingly, the game looks promising from what I've seen. And there's already a couple of things I've noticed as far as watching the trailer. And looking at certain things that I've spotted as far as what the minute 40 plus trailer has shown plus also the press article is also out so we're going to read that and trying to break it down the x style but yeah f1 2023 well f1 23 is officially announced obviously the leak was yesterday and we got a lot of the main features about the game red flags are back for the first time since f1 2014 we've went nearly 10 years without a red flag I don't want to sound like a hypocrite when I say, oh my god, red flags are back, but what took you guys so long on these red flags? I mean, they should have been in F1 2017, never mind, five years later on F1 23. I think, I mean, at least we have them, but at the same time, it's like, what took you so long with this? This should have been in games before this, even games before the EA purchase. This should have been on F1 2017 or 18 at least, but... Red flags are in, and as far as the breaking point story, it actually looks more enticing than than 2021 is concerned, especially with the female character and the cutscenes as well. I, I think graphically, I mean, obviously, when when you play the breaking point story on F1 23, graphically the game will look better, of course. But I think when it comes to the raw gameplay, I think this game looks better graphically. You know, the lighting, it looks way more brighter now. And the, the lighting as well, it looks more sharp. And I think the light, yeah. I'm saying light, the lighting too much. It's simply because that's the one thing I've noticed as far as this game. All right, I'm going to try and do my best to break it down, the X style, on this F123 official reveal trailer. The first gameplay that we have, or the cutscene that we have, is literally of Imola. And you can tell it's Imola because of the old final chicane and the curve straight. They literally have a shot at that with a helicopter, and then we get more gameplay of Imola with a Alfa Romeo overtaking um, the new team, Butler Global, Connor Sport Racing Team, in towards the final chicane, that looks like, because it, it looks like it's going up the hill after the hairpin in towards that uh, chicane. Afterwards, we see literally a great uh, cutscene of the F123 uh, spec car crashing into the wall, AKA kind of like Charlotte collected last year in towards the barrier and this is going to cause some arguments. The crash, the crash structure in F123, I don't think it's going to change just simply because of this cutscene. It like it does look realistic. However, I think that's pretty much CGI purpose and literally there's a cutscene and I just think the graphic for the crash model you know looks more realistic but i don't think when you're in the game i don't think the crash model will be like that so i think they've only done that on purpose because of the cutscene next up as we get introduced to the codemasters logo we get the first glimpses of the las vegas circuit and i can't lie the graphics for las vegas look absolutely stunning and graphically i, I know that this game is based on CGI cutscenes and there's raw gameplay snippets here and there, but I just think from a graphics perspective, this is much better than F122, even though F123 has the same um, Ego engine. And that was the one thing that a lot of people were wondering about, is F123 gonna be you know, the same engine or are they gonna go to a Frostbite engine? And with this trailer, it kind of, um, it, we pretty much know now that F123 is now going to be on the same engine. These next couple of screenshots we're going to see of Charles Leclerc, Lewis Hamilton, and it looks like the, the pit lane exit of Miami. And notice, this is 2022. And the reason why I say 2022 is because of the Haas. That, that, that is the Haas the Formula One 2022 livery. So it looks like we're going to be playing in the 2022 season kind of like we did in F1 2021 breaking point when we had to play in the 2020 season with the 2020 cars. So that's kind of interesting and also you can see uh, the McLaren as well. That looks like 2022. We get some close uh, screenshots of 
um, the Consport Racing Team. And now, this is a very interesting uh, cutscene. We have Kasper Ackman. Kasper Ackman is back in F1 2023 in the Breaking Point story alongside the female. Now, at first glimpse, I thought this was Kasper's daughter, but it turns out that is Kasper, uh, not Kasper, it's Devin's sister. And I'll literally do all the names in the press launch. This is going to be a long ass video, so just be prepared. Um, as I literally break this down. After that, we see some F2 footage in Abu Dhabi of her winning the F2 championship. She kind of looks like Susie Wolf a little bit. I'm not saying like much. I think really around the facial structures and her eyes. She looks like Susie Wolf a tiny bit. And then we get our first glimpses of Devin Butler. Butler, I think we now know the answers as far as who's driving this team and who's actually going to be in charge. I thought Devin Butler might have been the lead driver, but it doesn't look like he's the lead driver. I think he is either the team principal or he's just the owner. And then obviously we get some glimpses around Miami, the Mercedes. I think there's a car failure in there as well. And also Aiden Jackson. Aiden Jackson's also back as well. And then we get some uh, interview segments from Charles Leclerc on a mansion at Monaco. So I think they might use some footage from Charles Leclerc for this breaking point story. Um, we get some quick footage of, I think, uh, Aiden Jackson around Canada. I think it's either a rear suspension failure or a brake failure or something. Another key interesting cutscene in this trailer is when I think Aiden comes in for the pit lane around about the 41 second mark and it's literally Germany 2019 all over again. They don't have the tyres ready and it's a massive hold up and yeah, there's a massive delay on the front left tyre and it looks like there's going to be a scenario around Suzuka where you come in for the stop and you're going to have a 40 second pit stop because of this tyre delay. So I think one of the cutscenes and one of the objectives that you will have while playing this story is that you've got to try and, and fight your way through the field and try and get maybe a P6 or a P5 finish after getting this 40 second pit stop. We cut in towards the hairpin at Spain and as you can see there's an Aston Martin and also the Alfa Romeo. We get a cut of Baku and I think that is the McLaren of Oscar Piastri tangling with the Alpha Tauri and I think that is of Nick De Vries. No, it's Yuki Sonoda because Sonoda has the number 21 on his car. And pretty much as you can see, they crash up the hill coming out of the castle section and there is the reveal. Red flags are back in the game for the first time since F1 2014 and, and yeah, it's pretty much a big deal considering, you know, with these 50% to 100% races, a red flag comes out, that changes everything. So I'm glad red flags are back in the game, but at the same time, it they 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 kind of took the piss with red flags, considering that it should have been out, it should have been in the game, pretty much, you know, years after this. So after the red flag cutscene, we get some uh, cutscenes inside the driver's locker room with I think Aiden Jackson throws his helmet in frustration because of that red flag or something, and then we get Devin Butler again, and. Obviously, in these cutscenes, you know, the CGI cutscenes, the graphics will look better, of course, and uh, because of, you know, you know, full body motions and, you know, all that other stuff. But Devin does look older. We then cut to a, um, a, a brief shot of Red Bull at Silverstone, followed by um, the, the garage at Cotton Sport. So they may be celebrating a win or a pole position or even a podium. And then we get followed up with the cockpit view of a Mercedes. I don't know who it is because you can't really tell, but it looks like they've won the race. So that, that's that's mad. Then we get some podium sequences of Verstappen and then Ham uh, Verstappen, Alonso, and then we get a podium sequence between Charles Leclerc and Lewis Hamilton. And we get Sergio Perez winning at the Brazilian Grand Prix with Carlos Sainz in second. And it is the Brazilian Grand Prix because as you can see above, Perez it has the Sao Paulo so that is that there's the Brazilian Grand Prix in that cutscene we get some real life footage next of Max Verstappen and um, giving the interview and uh, claiming that he always wants to win we got five red lights and we get some more cockpit gameplay of the Alpha Tauri oh no it's not Alpha Tauri it's Alpha Romeo and also a McLaren there's another gameplay quick screenshots of Monza Monaco 
Um, I believe that's Monza coming down the hill in towards the old uh, circuit. We get another cutscene with this bald guy and Aiden Jackson literally complaining that the team, uh, something must have happened with the team and Aiden didn't score enough points. We get another screenshot and another cutscene of the two uh, Conan Sport uh, racing cars going onto the curb straight at Melbourne with a guitar uh, sponsor there. They crash literally at a thing that's turn three at Baku, which forces one of the cars off the runoff area. We get uh, the updated Haas with the Aston Martin. We get the McLaren coming in towards Cops Corner at Silverstone in the wet. And then we get the Alpha Tauri around Monaco. And we get another cutscene of, I think, the female and also uh, a, a business guy in a suit. Um, I think he might be a press guy, I'm, I'm not really sure. And then we get Aiden Jackson. And then we get a very interesting cutscene. My voice is starting to go, by the way. We get a very interesting uh, cutscene here with Devin's sister, with Devin Butler. And I think they may be in an argument. They might have uh, disagreed about strategy or something or, you know, red flags. Very interesting dynamics in this breaking point story. And then we get some uh, quick sequences of a Red Bull of um, the Haas and the AlphaTauri coming into Austria. We get a free wide moment between uh, the Mercedes, the Ferrari, and I think that is the Red Bull of Sergio Perez. We get more, clim quick, uh, more uh, quick uh, glimpses of the Williams around Cotha. And then we get a Mercedes, Alpine, Haas, and then the Alfa Romeo around Imola. I think that's turn one. We get a couple of quick sequences. I think the Singapore layout will be in this game. I hope it will because I've because I've seen a lot of news as far as the new tracks are now updated. They're now laser scanned apparently. But according to the beta I, I saw of Silverstone and Turn 1 is still there. We get a sequence of the Haas crashing at Monaco. That's at the final chicane. And then obviously we get some qu quick glimpses and a smooth transition of Max Verstappen saying, be last to break. And then we end the trailer with a Mercedes, a Red Bull and a Ferrari. Three wide going into the redesigned hairpin at Abu Dhabi. And then title sequence F123 comes out June 16th. Whew, that was quite a lot to break down. All right, so now let's get into the press release of F123. F123 launching June 16th, so the date was right, on the leak. New precision drive technology delivers fastly improved pad play alongside real F1 team feedback for the ultimate F1 wheel experience. Who will be the last to break? Well, me, obviously. Headlining the return of the epic story mode breaking point, F123 is home to every team driver and circuit of the 2023 season including the highly anticipated Las Vegas and Qatar circuits. Obviously, they're in the game, and if they weren't in the game, it would be a complete outrage. Right, Breaking Point returns. The enthralling narrative-driven story mode, Breaking Point makes its return with even more drama and action waiting to unfold. Following the careers of young upstar Aiden Jackson and the infamous protagonist Evan Butler, the pair find themselves as together as Conan Sport Racing Team, the most recent team to join the Formula 1 grid. Rising star in Formula 2 and sister to Devin Butler, Kaylee Mayer has become the first woman to ever win the F2 Championship. Hungry for more success, she is keen to get a shot in Formula 1. Will Devin or Aiden make way for Kaylee, or will team and family dynamics cause problems? So it looks like she is the fair driver in this situation so it looks like Devon and Aiden are teammates and Carly is the fair driver as Devon's younger sister that's interesting and I think this you know mode and this dynamic screams like a grid story or like a, an old talker racing story and I like how they've brought that little dynamic from the old talker and the old grid games into this mode there's a lot to look forward to in the story that twists and turns that are based on the choices made along the way. So it looks like we will get the chance to make choices and maybe alternate endings in Breaking Point 2.0. Two new circuits, obviously Qatar and Las Vegas. The Lossal International Circuit was first raced in 2021, but the Las Vegas Street Circuit is entirely new layout. Never been raced before in Formula 1 which means that an F123 players can take the strip ahead of the drivers themselves. And also, 
we get legacy circuits. However, they're not the legacy circuits you think, they're just literally the old circuits we had last year. So France, Shanghai and Portimao are coming back in F1 23. I don't think anyone's asked about them. I just think, you know, more content the better I guess, but you know, it's not really the, the, the tracks we want to drive on. Handling upgrades. Okay, this is interesting. Incorporating actual F1 team feedback, F123's handling vehicle handling has had some significant improvements over the last game for both wheel and pad users. New vehicle physics gives cars better traction when braking, accelerating and cornering, allowing for more predictable behavior plus greater balance between aerodynamics and tire grip results in a more realistic feel. Okay, that's interesting. So now, it doesn't matter if you're in a pad or a wheel, we should get more response as far as slow speed corners, rear traction, and also the tyre physics. That's very interesting. Following community feedback, several highly requested features will be included in F123. Red Flags will make their return to the series after 9 years, will add even more drama, with drivers and teams needing to rethink race strategies on the fly as the grid returns to the pits. That's interesting. 35% race distances, that was already leaked as well. As previously only seen in F1 Esports, strikes the perfect balance between short and long race options. Also a new colour encoding system, similar to that used on film and TV, will be implemented across the game, resulting in a more true-to-life virtual experience, or visual experience. So, it looks like this game, from a graphics pers perspective, will be improved colour. Right, this is the interesting part. Introducing F1 World. Serving as your go-to place for all things Formula 1, and with content inspired by the F1 calendar, F1 World makes its debut in F1 23. F1 World helps introduce players to the complex world of Formula 1 by tying together multiple game modes, such as Time Trial, Grand Prix and Multiplayer, offering an exciting new way to play the game. Really? That, that's... Offering new exciting what? No, no, it's not. We've had those three modes we've had since the start of the series. I mean, unless the whole modes have been retransformed in a way with presentation and all that stuff, that's not new. We've had time trial, we've had Grand Prix mode, and we've had multiplayer. So, how is this exciting when we've had this since the start of the series? Featuring an ever changing roster of seasonal content with daily and weekly challenges to get stuck into, drivers can unlock new liveries, race suits, and helmets as part of a new progression system. Oh, for fuck's sakes. So, this is gonna be the new season pass, I think. Oh, give me strength! Oh, great. So F1 World is now literally the new season pass. Wonderful. By advancing new F1 World, players will improve their tech level, unlock parts and team member upgrades to equip to the new F1 World car. That's weird. Okay. So, unlock parts. What does that mean by parts? Does that mean upgrade parts? Does that mean front wing parts? Chassis parts? Side parts? Does that mean individual parts for the car? Are we going to get more than one design for each member of the car? That's interesting. Hopefully, hopefully that's the case. As tech level increases, more challenges and events come available. Linking online and offline play in F1 World, a safety rating system encourages drivers to race cleanly and pairs mind alike drivers more efficiently for improved online racing. I mean, come on. I don't care what you say about the online, there's still going to be noobs on day one, there's still going to be bad drivers crashing into people. That's just a given. Right, this is the Champions Edition now. Available to pre-order now, the digital exclusive F123 Champions Edition, featuring two-time reigning champion Max Verstappen, on the cover comes with the following content. Time-limited Las Vegas content pack, just like the Miami pack last year. Max Verstappen race wear pack, don't know what that means, probably just like a Verstappen, you know, customised. Livery, race suit, gloves, breaking point 2.0, icons and vanity item pack. Don't know what that means, don't really care. Dual entitlement, so I'm guessing that's literally 
um, cross the uh, cross generation between Xbox One and Xbox Series X. Four new Mighty Micons. Okay, that's interesting. I mean, we got four new Mighty Micons last year. Hopefully, we get four more others this year, and four others that you know are actually decent and that the fans actually want to see. We get the predictable XP boost, F1 will bumper pack. 18,000 pick coins and three days early access starting June 13th. So if you pre-order the game, you will play the game on June 13th. So that is literally, what, a month and 10 days. And if I remember correctly, that is 15 days earlier than what F122 came out when it launched their version of the Champions Edition. For those who pre-order the physical and digital standard edition, you'll get the F1 World Starter Pack and 5,000 pick coins. F123 will release across PS5, Xbox Series X and S, PS4, Xbox One, PC via EA app, Steam and Epic Games Store on June 16th. And that is that of the press release. Hopefully, I've tried my best to break down this reveal trailer bit by bit, step by step, clip by clip. And there's pretty much a lot of stuff to literally go by in this trailer. So, yeah, that's that for F123. It doesn't look that bad. I thought I thought we might have gotten worse with the delay, but the reveal actually looks promising. And hopefully we get more inside information as far as the handling, as far as the AI are concerned, and just the general gameplay as we get closer to launch. And hopefully we get our first glimpses of Qatar and also Las Vegas. But that is that for this long video, 22 minutes. Holy shit, that's long. Um, <laughs> if you're still here, Thanks for watching, make sure to like, share, comment and subscribe for more F1 23 news as the game launches on June 13th. Thanks for watching, make sure to like, share, comment and subscribe for more F1 23 content and I'll see you all in the next video. In a bit.